hello let us do a problem on velocity me in mechanisms in a typical slider crank mechanism so the problem statement is the crank and the connecting rod of a theoretical steam engine are 0.5 meter and 2 meter long respectively the crank rotates at 180 rpm in clockwise direction when it has turned 45 degree from the inner dead center position determine velocity of the piston angular velocity of the connecting rod velocity of a point e on the connecting rod that is 1.5 meter from the gudgeon pin position and linear velocity of any point g which has the least velocity relative to the crankshaft here it means absolute velocity because crankshaft is not moving it is a turning pair which is standing at single position and going around in a, around its axis and rubbing velocity at the pins of the crankshaft crank and the cross head when their pin diameters are 50 60 and 30 mm respectively let us go on so first step in any of these problems is to do the configuration diagram let us look at the dimensions and create the first the configuration let us first draw the fixed point for any diagram doesn't matter whether you are doing a configuration diagram or a velocity diagram or an acceleration diagram it always starts from the fixed point in our case the fixed point is the center bearing it's named as O to this O is your crank is connected connecting rod is connected to the crank and the connecting rod is connected to the piston which slides inside the guideways let us see that one by one so now take your protractor place it like this so when you see the question it is mentioned 45 degree from the inner dead center position inner dead center is to your left you will see that in full detail on completing the configuration diagram mark a 45 degree to your left <coughs> from the horizontal and draw a line through that so that represents your crank line and in this line you have to mark the length of your crank look at the question length of the crank is given as 0 0.5 meter Therefore, take 0 0.5 meter in your compass and cut an arc at the point, 0.5 meter from O. Let us name that point as B. Okay, now OB represents your crank. Now, next point is we have to identify the end of the connecting rod, that is a gudgeon pin. But before we do that, in a typical slider crank mechanism, you have to draw the horizontal axis on which your piston is reciprocating therefore draw a horizontal dotted line which represents the sliding axis of your piston now you can you can draw the connecting rod starting from b to where it intersects of this horizontal axis so now take your compass <coughs> read the question it is given as 200 i mean 2000 mm 2 meter is the length of the crank i forgot to mention the scale you have to use here 0.5 meter is 500 millimeter. I am taking 50 mm. 1 is to 10 divided by 10. So 500 mm is represented as a 50 mm line here. O to B. I mean O to B. So instead of drawing a 500 mm line, I have drawn a 50 mm line in O to B. Now I have to follow the same scale for the entire configuration diagram. Therefore, your 2000 mm, that is a 2 meter connecting rod, should be drawn as 20. 200 instead of 2000 you, have, you can do it by 10 you will get 200 mm which is 20 centimeter you can scale it down if you feel uncomfortable if you want to draw a 20 centimeter arc it is, if you feel it is uncomfortable scale it down still you can go with a 25 mm crank and a 100 mm that is a 10 centimeter connecting rod so i leave the scale to you with bs center 2 meters scale down to some value either 20 centimeter or 10 centimeter as radius cut an arc and locate the point gudgeon pin let us name that point as connect the line 2 meter line so it is wise to choose a 1 is to 20 scale in this problem rather than 1 is to 10 because here you will be ending up with a 20 centimeter arc which is practically very difficult to do with your compass so it's better to go with the 1 to 20 scale which means o to b is 2.5 centimeter or 25 millimeter and again b to the gudgeon pin 
will be 10 centimeter 100 mm so now let us put the slider around that point and the constraints let's name that point as p and put the horizontal constraints along which it slides mark the angle so now in order to understand what is idc and odc that is inner dead center and outer dead center now it is easy to explain the paths traveled by this point B all around the crank rotation is represented by a dotted circle. This path intersects with your horizontal slider axis of two points, one on the left and one on the right. When the crank point B intersects the horizontal axis on the left side, on your left side, the piston will be at the left extreme position on the innermost position. Similarly, on the right side, the piston will be at the downmost or the right extreme position. Therefore, we call it as inner dead center and outer dead center respectively. Now, this dotted circle and the IDC, ODC are not necessary for the configuration diagram. I have just shown this for your understanding. I remove that. <coughs> you don't have to draw that. So, now, there is a point E given in the question. Take this point P, gadget pin as your center and take 1.5 meter is the distance given. 1.5 meter, the Point E is located at a distance of 1.5 meter from the gadget pin as the question reads. Now take your compass, put the needle at P, take the radius to some suitable 1 is to 20 scale value that is uh, 1500 millimeter by 20 should be 75 millimeter out of the 100. So take 75 millimeter in your compass, cut an arc as shown here and let us name that point as E as the question reads. So mark the direction of rotation and the speed of rotation so that completes your configuration diagram Let's move on and do the velocity diagram so velocity diagram again the velocity diagram also starts with a fixed point please don't forget that please put the let's have this configuration diagram as a reference because we have to take perpendiculars every now and then to draw the velocity vectors it is wise to draw your velocity vector triangle polygon just below the configuration diagram easy for you to take the perpendiculars now let us start the velocity diagram by analyzing the given data crank speed 180 rpm crank radius 0 0.5 meter angular velocity is calculated 2 pi n by 60 is 18.852 radians per second the crank velocity linear velocity see please remember don't do velocity diagrams with angular velocities always do it only with linear velocities Linear velocity equal to angular velocity into radius. So do it reverse the conversion. Linear velocity equal to angular velocity into radius. Okay. Please remember, don't do uh, velocity diagrams with your angular velocities. Now, after looking at all these data, now we can proceed and start the velocity diagram. Put the fixed point. Here, fixed point is O. The fixed point doesn't change between diagrams. Please remember that there is only one fixed point. If you have multiple fixed points, it will appear on a single point on the vector diagram. Here only one fixed point is there, O. Let's name it as small o. Now, take your scale, position the scale perpendicular to your crank. So, it will be better for you to use a drafter scale. Position it perpendicular to your crank. Transfer the scale to this point. And remember, what is the velocity of this linear velocity of this crank is something around 9.5 so i am scaling it let us say 1 millimeter equal to 0 0.1 meter per second therefore 9.5 will be 95 mm 9.5 meter per second is represented as a 95 mm i mark 95 mm here i connect it i name that point as b o b represents your crank velocity connect it mark the direction so now that completes your crank velocity vector so now to move on take the scale again place it parallel to the horizontal please remember slider moves horizontally in a rectilinear motion for rectilinear motion velocity vector is parallel to the motion path only for rotation it is perpendicular therefore transfer this horizontal direction to the point o and draw an indefinite line representing op vector we are not sure about its length we know only the line of action okay now again take your scale place it perpendicular to your connecting rod connecting rod is between b and p b for ball p for 
pumpkin okay b and p now transfer this direction to the point b i don't know where is p so now i draw an indefinite line again as earlier to determine <coughs> the point p now where these dotted lines intersect is your point p so now that almost gives you a good outline of your velocity diagram okay now let us mark the directions in the velocity diagram so now this completes your base velocity polygon measure the length of your the, look at your first question the first question reads what is the velocity of the piston so measure the length of this line and multiply it with the scaling factor you will get the velocity of the piston so the length of this line is 81.5 millimeter so I'm by multiplying the scaling factor see actually it is represented as divided by here it is wrong please make it into multiplication 81.5 into 0.1 it will be 8.15 meter per second so velocity of your piston is 8.15 meter per second so next thing second question what is the angular velocity of the connecting rod measure the see please if you get any doubt which line represents the connecting rod look at the space frame or the configuration diagram connecting rod starts from b and ends at p on the gradient pin similarly you look for the same alphabets in the velocity diagram b and p measure its length so that gives you the linear velocity of your connecting rod now i have to convert that into angular velocity the length is 68 millimeter therefore linear velocity is 6.8 meter per second converting that into angular velocity simple divide the linear velocity by the radius of your connecting rod you get angular velocity 6.8 by 2 is 3.4 radians per second so that is the second answer angular velocity of the connecting rod is 3.4 radians per second now coming to the next point i have to locate this point e on the velocity triangle so let us look at this location of point e on the space frame or the configuration diagram first so i know that the point e is located at a distance of 1.5 meter from the gradient pin so to find its location on the velocity triangle i'm going to follow a relationship as shown here capital b by bp equal to small b by bp so capital letters indicate your configuration diagram small alphabets indicate your velocity diagram so cross multiply and find out the small b e putting substituting all the values i get it as 17 millimeter which means what my point e is located at a distance of 17 millimeter from b that is point e is at a distance of 17 mm from b on the bp line so take your compass put your compass needle on the point b with b as center 17 mm as a radius cut an arc like this on bp and name that point as point e so the question reads what is the absolute velocity of a point e on the connecting rod at a distance of 1.5 meter from the gradient pin so in order to find out the absolute velocity you have to refer the length of this e from the fixed point so connect it with the fixed point mark the direction measure its length so now i understand the length of this length of this oe vector gives me the value of the point e velocity again okay. the next question reads what is the velocity of i mean identify the value of minimum velocity and the location of that minimum velocity point on the connecting rod therefore what i am doing i am putting a perpendicular line from o to the line bp that is you please think like this i am starting to draw a line starting from o and ends on the bp line in every possible angle within this permissible triangle so imagine which is the least possible longest line least length line possible is only the line which is the second dotted line drawn below so that is a perpendicular line to the bp that is that will be the least length possible to be drawn between the two points so therefore i call it as the perpendicular is marked i call that point as point g you measure its length it comes to 50 mm which is by our scale ratio it is 5 meter per second so 5 meter per second is the minimum velocity point magnitude of velocity now we have to locate the position spatial location of this point g on the configuration diagram therefore what you do again follow the same proportionality method between bg and bp on both the so now 
let us calculate let us find out the location of this point g on the connecting rod by similar method small bg by bp equal to capital bg by bp now the calculation gives me 1.47 meter so now what i do please please look at this the point g is at a distance of 1.47 from b not p so b for ball so take 1470 mm by 20 is your scale so that comes to 73.5 millimeter take that in your compass 7.35 centimeter okay take 7.4 put your compass needle at point b with b as center 7.4 centimeter or 73.5 millimeters radius cut an arc and mark that point as point g so now that completes four questions the last question left out is your rubbing velocity so rubbing velocity is the easy part but one important thing you have to listen in rubbing velocity you have to understand the direction sense of rotation of the each link so look at the crank o b crank is fixed to o and is going around o b is going around o there is no motion in point o there is only motion in point b therefore you have one you are dealing with only one angular velocity in a crank therefore simple angular velocity is ob 18.852 which we already know so radius of the crank pin at the point o is given in the question as 50 mm find its radius 0.025 meter so now we multiply this angular velocity with the 0.025 crank pin i mean the crank pin radius you get 0.47 meter per second so the formula for rubbing velocity calculation angular velocity into pin radius here you have only one angular velocity so therefore you have only one angular velocity 18.852 into pi naught 25 which is 0.47 meter per second similarly now let us go to the crank pin b so the crank pin b is having a 60 mm diameter find its radius 0.03 meter <coughs> angular velocity at this point b please listen angular velocity at point b it's very important so you already know that the crank is going around at 18.852 radians per second plus let us add the angular velocity of the connecting rod to that because here <coughs> the crank and the connecting rod are going in opposite senses so opposite directions means you add the relative velocities so that is 22.52 radians per second so now you multiply that by the pin radius you get 0.6675 meter per second is the rubbing velocity of point i mean the crank pin b the last one is a gudgeon pin crosshead pin Diameter is given as 30, radius is 0.015, angular velocity at point P, there is only one, obviously there is only one angular velocity here, because the piston is going to move up front and left and right, there is no rotation involved, there is only one rotation, that is not full rotation, angular oscillation of the connecting rod about the point P, which is moving at 3.4, we already know, therefore there is only one angular velocity, now let us multiply that with the pin radius, you get the last answer 0.051 meter per second is the rubbing velocity of the pin at point p now that completes the problem i hope